All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to week something, day three of Computer Science 1. We got uh, this week um, and then a couple days next week. And that is about it uh, for this class. So, um, you guys awake? You guys ready to do this? Had your coffee? You guys ready for the final in 20 minutes? <laughs> it's a great way of waking students up, huh? <laughs> <They're trying> to... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'm awake now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now the final is... Uh, uh, pre-tested on production. Yeah, that's a great way of waking up. XKCD had some uh, uh, good examples of uh, text that will wake you up the other day. Most heart-stopping text to receive out of the blue. Did you forget what day it is? Wait, how do you know Joe Rogan? How does he know your name? You just imagine getting that and be like, oh no. <laughs> oh dear. Uh. <laughs> Is this your house? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, this is from uh, Kimi Noah, um, your name, which is a pretty, pretty uh, fantastic uh, anime movie that came out, like, what, five or six years ago? Your Tears. <laughs> yeah, that's one way of putting it. Uh, 2016, yeah, five years ago. Yeah, really good. Um, you need to see it. Um, well worth it. The the guy who uh, who makes it and he he recently came out with a was it Tinky uh, Weathering of You, but it's like children. Uh, what was it? Tinky no Ko. Yeah. Children. It means weather's children in, in Japanese. Uh, what did you think of weathering with you? Um, I liked it. I like I liked both of them. And he's considered by a lot of people to be sort of the heir to um, Hayao Miyazaki, the uh, guy who did Studio Ghibli. He has kind of a similar art style. And uh, his um, oh, wallpaper engine's updating. Anyhow. So, uh, apologies for the gardeners who, of course, immediately decided to start gardening outside my window the second class starts. So, uh, we're going to talk about binary numbers today. Here's another one from Kimi Noah. Um, so, we're going to talk about binary numbers today, and then uh, we might get into uh, um, media, the 010101 stuff. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, if any of you guys saw, what was it called? Good Guy, was that it? With Ryan Reynolds. Uh, what was it called? Free Guy. Free Guy, not Good Guy. Free Guy with uh, Ryan Reynolds. Um, there's this really cringeworthy quote from the uh, computer science guy. I am an artist with zeros and ones. Something like that. Um... I don't know if there's a meme for it, but he's like the the programmer who makes this like online video game says something along the lines of like I I'm an artist except I express my art through zeros and ones and and that's binary is what they're talking about when when my mom describes what I do she says uh, you know he just he programs in zeros and ones all the time which is like uh, no. <laughs> We don't, but it, but it is important to know binary stuff. If you notice, we only talk in zeros and ones. Yeah, it's funny. Um, like Morse code. Yeah, exactly. Actually, um, so what does it look like? Um,
So that's the letter ampersand. That's single quote. No. That's pound key or hashtag. So, um, do we do we computer science people communicate in zeros and ones to each other? Uh, hell no. <laughs> we use English, you know. Uh, behind the scenes, though, what's happening is that it's it's zeros and ones, and um, and so that's that's why we're doing a little unit right now on binary numbers and the uh, binary representation of, of of numbers and things like that. Basically, um, have any of you guys seen The Martian with, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Matt Damon in it. There's a, uh, there's a scene in it where he's got... Yeah, here. So there's a scene in it where he's like trying to communicate with uh, NASA. Like he uh, he reestablishes communications kind of with NASA. They have the ability. They can't talk to him, but they have the ability to like rotate the head of the ro Mars rover or whatever. And so what he does is he um, is he puts up little signs around the Mars rover and has the Mars rover look at one of the numbers for a second. And then he writes that down. And then he uses an ASCII table, which is what we were just looking at a second ago, which is how ones and zeros map to uh, letters and symbols and things like that. Like, remember I typed in 100011, that was hashtag. It's this one, right? So, the, uh, um, he ate poo-poo potatoes. Martian was really good. Yeah, his latest book, by the way, um, is, uh, is pretty good. Um, Artemis wasn't as good. Um, but, um, but the latest one is actually quite a lot like the, um, yeah, there we go. There's some computer. Um, so Andy Weir is like a complete nerd and it, it bugs me when movies have bad science in them, like <clears throat> Interstellar. Um, if we detach something in, like if we're a spaceship and we detach part of the spaceship, we'll go faster. No, no, you don't. You just travel at the same speed together. Oh, interstellar bugs me so much. So, uh, but Andy Weir is like a certifiable nerd. Like he is, he is a nerd's nerd. And, um, the Martian, uh, which is a fantastic novel, uh, about survival. It's like a survival story on Mars was turned into a, a movie with Matt Damon. And then his, uh, more recent book, Project Hail Mary, is a lot like The Martian. Um, Artemis is more of an adventure story set on the moon. Uh, it does have good science in it, but if you've if you've read or watched the movie The Martian, um, Project Hail Mary is, is, is good. I highly recommend. So yeah, <clears throat> uh, that movie was pretty. Uh, it's just the science that bugs me. Like. Um, So, uh, you've been in this problem, uh, convert from base five to base seven. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So like, uh, who was it? Ashley that said, uh, it's like Morse code. Yeah. It's like Morse code. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Yeah. That, and that would mean exclamation mark. Right. And so how, uh, how Watney, the uh, astronaut stru stuck on Mars, communicates with uh, with NASA is he he basically has a copy of an ASCII table in his reference materials on Mars as a USB drive or something that's got all these movies and stuff on it to keep him from uh, occupied really while he's stuck on Mars, and uh, he uh, he uses the ASCII table which was in you know these reference files that he had and. So the thing would look at this and look at this and look at this and it would, he would translate it, um, not from binary, but from uh, hex. 
So if you look at this thing here, this isn't binary, this is hex, right? You see where it says hexadecimal? And so if the Mars rover looked at uh, 8, uh, 4, then that would be the letter H, right? And so, and then it would pause, then it would look at um, 5, it would look at 5, then 4, that would be an E. And then it could spell out hello, you know, very slowly and laboriously. And um, they communicated one letter at a time with each other, which was good because he had been like they didn't even know he was alive for a long time. And uh, and then they taught him how to like fix up communications and things like that with uh, with Earth, so he could actually talk to them in real time. And I looked at them like, "Yep, yep, that's actually a really legitimate solution," which. Um, is not something I say about uh, movies very often, right? So, uh, I don't know if the sex table is correct. Let's see here. Um, oh, that's seven. No, that's 84 it has here. Oh, it's 40. Oh, I just am reading backwards. 48. Yeah, okay. So 48 is H. Okay. Yeah. And then 45 is E. All right. Yeah. So it's it's actually actually good computer science, which is not something I say very often. I'm actually quite picky when it comes to, um, to Hollywood and movies, and they actually got it right in The Martian. So, um... Yeah, Zybooks, if you have any questions about the Zybooks, let me know. Um, one student was asking earlier why it wasn't taking it. It's because uh, she had spaces in the um, answer, and they want it without spaces. So, kind of picky like that. Sorry. Um, binary to octal. Um, yeah, let's talk about that in a second. So, anyway, so the way the binary works is that, uh, let's make this zero. Let's make that zero. So zero plus zero is zero. Yep. Yeah. So easy so far. Zero plus one is one. Now, this is where similarities uh, end, right? Um, because binary is called base two. So that means there's only two numbers in all of existence, zero and one. Just like with base 10, which is our normal system, and we use base 10 because we got uh, ten fingers, all right? Ten toes, maybe. Um, the council will decide your fate. <laughs> um, you could use you could use Morse code, yeah. It's um, and in fact, uh, the uh, the ASCII encodings that I just showed you that came from uh, the telegraph days. So what you're using to type right now, this is a live lecture right now, you're actually sending bits and dots, you know, that basically dates back to, um, you know, I don't know, like the 1850s or something. So it's actually, it's actually backwards compatible back to the telegraph days. Because what happened was we had telegraphs, people did Morse code by hand, and then, um, they created what's called teletype where it would uh, have a machine do it for you. So you would have a typewriter and you hit the letter E and then it would go doo -doo 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 -doo, and send that to the other side and the computer would listen to it and go doo -doo -doo -doo. oh, and then it would print an E. It would, the, the typewriter on the other end would hit E. It was called a teletype because it was a typewriter that when you type on it, the typewriter on the other end would type the same key. And that was where ASCII came from which is the, uh, the that, that table of ones and zeros that I just showed you a second ago that, that they used in the Martian. That actually comes from back in, back in the, the day. And uh, teletype machines were widely used for a long time. Before you had the internet, you could type on a keyboard and uh, the keys on the keyboard in the, in the New York office would, would type the same thing. Uh, Oregon Trail, I don't know if you guys know Oregon Trail, is a... It's an educational computer game, somewhat famous. 
Um, and uh, legacy games. Um, so uh, Oregon Trail is actually made in 1971. Like what? Like what? Like because I I played it back in the day, like on the Apple II. And and when I read the story of the Oregon Trail, I'm like it's 71. Like who the hell even had a computer in 71? You know what I mean? And uh, they actually wrote it in 71 and lost the source code, and then recreated it years later. Um, but uh, they had a uh, HP 2100 mini computer. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, time shared basic. Um, so yeah, basically they had a, they had a teletype machine set up in the eighth grade classroom and then students could like go up and type it to it, you know, hunt for deer or whatever. And it would go, doo -doo 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 and it's like, you have hunted for one deer, you know, and, uh, you, you couldn't, you couldn't do like the interactive hunting game or anything like that. But, um, anyone know code? I, I had to learn code. A uh, Morse code. Um, uh, you lost your family on day two to dysentery. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I had to learn Morse code for my ham ham radio certification. Forgotten it by now. But, uh, yeah, I had to memorize the whole thing and pass a Morse code test and everything. Sure. Um, forgotten all of it by now. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, and so the uh, the type the um, the teletype devices actually had a bell key uh, that you'd hit the bell and it'd ring the bell on the other side. So like if, if the person on the other side wasn't paying attention to you, you could hit the bell key and it'd go ring 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 ring. And you're like, hey, pay attention to me, ring 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 ring. And so the original Oregon Trail uh, when uh, when you got attacked or whatever, uh, it would it would play the bell ring 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 ring, and and the kids would get all excited and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, everything we do in computer science is backwards compatible, and and it's surprising how far back backwards compatibility goes. Like you, you guys might have heard about punch cards and things like this. Like these things, which uh, is how you had to program back in the day. Um, all right. And, uh, <laughs> not that kind of punch card, this kind of punch card. And so look, it's, um, you know, and so this actually dates back to, eighteen oh four. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Punch cards. What? You know, you know I'm like that's surprisingly early in human history. We had programmable looms. It's like nowadays we would have like some sort of industrial machine that was it's controllable by a program. Uh, back then they had a programmable loom, and you'd use punch cards to indicate the lace pattern you wanted. And so you would do a punch card, and then the the holes you put in the in the punch card would control how the um, the the lacing went on the on the on the loom, and uh, and so yeah, there it is. And so you would actually write programs for your loom in 1804. Like what? <laughs> how how is that like humanly possible? You know what I mean? And it's pretty. Uh, pretty cool um that exists and then that technology was used up through the 19 you know 70s really 1980s to do uh, programs like they would actually program a computer using the same technology that was invented in the early 1800s like think of like george washington was alive and george washington could have been programming you know so how did they not lose their sanity i don't know like my dad quit programming when he was he was carrying a bunch of his his punch cards and he tripped and he fell and he dumped them on the ground and then you have to put them back in order and he just went nope I'm not going to do that and he just quit <laughs> and, then, 
And that was the end of my dad's uh, programming career. He just noped right out. He's like, mm, not doing this anymore. He became a manager for programmers. He didn't, he didn't, he's like, no, hell no. He's just looking at a thousand punch cards on the ground. He's like, mm -mm, not going to do it. Okay. So the rules for the rules for binary, uh, zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one. And then one plus one is what? What is one plus one? One plus one is ten. Ah, one zero. Yeah, this is the point at which my wife walks in and does the uh, Grandpa Simpson walk in, turn around, walk out thing. One plus one is ten. Nope. <laughs> I'm out of here. Why? Well... Because in binary, there's only two numbers. There's zero and there's one. And so, just like in a base 10, if we add five and five, we get 10, right? Because there is no 10, like, letter. You know what I mean? Like, we have a, a letter for, we have a symbol for zero through nine, but after nine, there's no symbols left. So we carry the one and then start at zero again. So nine plus one is 10. Right. 19 plus 1 is 20. Right. But there's no 2 in binary. Right. So if we had 1, 1, which is 3, and we add 1 to it, it's going to be 4. Right. So what is 4 in binary? Do you guys have you guys learned about the different place values of binary and stuff like that? You're so confused. Let me ex let me explain to you on that. On the tablet, that might help. So eleven plus one is a hundred. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, Brian, that's two. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the uh, the gif, actually. So let's explain, let's explain binary numbers. So if I said, what is zero, zero, uh, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one in binary, how do you convert this from binary to decimal is you have to understand that each one of the digits here has a meaning. Okay. Did you guys ever take, um, like second grade math where they try to explain to you that, uh, 527 and this is like the ones digit. This is like the tens digit. This is like the hundreds digit. They ever, they ever like do that explanation with you. And so, uh, you already know this. It's, it's fine. It's, it's worth going over for the people that have never seen it before though. Uh, your next programming summit's coming out today, by the way. So, um, you guys are gonna be doing data science. Hey. So, uh, it's a really easy data science program. I, I work with Berkeley on uh, data science. I presented at their data science conference, uh, I guess it was a year ago now, which is funny because I don't know anything about data science. So if you guys ever worry about having imposter syndrome, just, just remember I spoke at a conference at Berkeley, the number one computer science school in the world on a topic I know nothing about. That was, that was good times right there. And, uh, um, sus syndrome. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, and, and I, I, uh, it was online. Of course I didn't have to drive out. There was virtual during the pandemic, but, um, I got the, uh, I got the Dean of the college to laugh so loud that it, she actually cut in on my audio feed. Um, so whole weekend for the computer science assignments. It's, it's, it's easy. It's easy. We'll go over that in a bit though. All right. So anyway, so this is, uh, seven, this is 20, right? This is 500. Have you guys ever seen this before? So the ones digit, the tens digit, the hundreds digit, right? So this, this part here, this number here represents 500. This number represents 20. This number represents seven. Um,
so centrum in play. Uh, yeah, are you guys familiar with this? Like this this terminology here? We've got like the different the different digits mean different things. It's the same way for binary. So you got the yeah, they have little cubes. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So this is the one digit in binary, but we're not doing base ten. We're doing base two. So this is the twos digit. This is the fours digit. This is the eights digit, sixteens digit, thirty seconds digit, and so on and so forth. So all, you see how these are all powers of ten. These are all powers of two. So this is this number here. Okay. It's uh. This digit here means one, this digit here means four, this digit here means eight, and so eight plus four plus one is 13. Okay. So this is, this is 13 in binary. So each one of the digits represents a number twice as big as the one before it, just kind of like in um, 718, this is the ones digit, this is the tens digit, this is the hundreds digit. This represents 700 plus 10 plus 8, all right? This represents 8 plus 4 plus 1. These are powers of 10. These are powers of 2. That's a 1, by the way, not, a, not an L. There is no 2. You see that? There's no two here because the two's digit is zero. If there's a one there, you have the digit. So we got a one, we got a four, we got an eight. There's no two, there's no 16, there's no 32 because there's zeros. The, the ones you add up, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, ones you add up, zeros you don't, exactly. So let me give you a number of in and, and you tell me what the, uh, you tell me what the number is. So what, what number is this in decimal? Nine. Yeah, exactly. Anyone else want to volunteer to convert? Brian. All right. Let's do it. Yeah, that's right. Just throwing a negative one there. There is no negative one. <laughs> He's, am I muted? Or is uh, Brian 57? All right. 48, uh, 48 plus 8 is 56 plus 1 is uh, 57. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Well done. Round of applause for Brian, please. That's good. Put, putting you on the spot with the... Uh... <laughs> All right, who wants to volunteer now? All right, Joanna. Once again, thrown under the bus, 16 plus one. Ooh, uh, 21, nope, 17, yeah, good. Yeah, very good, all right. Who wants to go next? Nine and ten. All right, Ashley, you're up. All right. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, Mitchell, you're up. Mitchell Edwards, what'd you got? 38. Uh, 32 plus 4 is 36 plus 2. It does seem to me to be 38. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys, okay. more important than driving, 
I mean, uh, to be fair, if she tries converting that binary, she would literally be thrown under the bus because she would drive under it. <laughs> I should have had a Tesla. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Sebastian, Let's convert this one. Three, very good. Okay, and then if you add binary numbers together, um, the the rules of the rules of addition are pretty much the same. Let's see if I can make some room here. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, seriously. Gotta use the mouse for this. Come on, let me move it. Thank you. All right. So, if I... If I want to add 3 plus 11... 11 is 8 plus 3, right? If I want to add these two numbers up. Everything will start right to left. Uh, yeah, yeah, same as... same as, uh, By the way, this is something that um, I got wrong on one of my finals because I did it left to right instead of right to left because when I was in middle school, uh, the science teacher had a little binary flip card thing that every time it flipped it would count up to the next digit and things like that but it went the other way and so I learned binary right to left instead of left to right or no the other way around whatever backwards and so I wrote all the binary numbers backwards on my uh, did all the math right it was just everything was mirrored uh, okay so what is 3 plus 8? Oh, yeah, I know it's 11. <laughs> binary. Binary. And technically, 11 is binary, so that's 3, so... <laughs> 11 is 3. You're wrong. <laughs> um... So how do we do how do we do addition here? Um, one plus one is ten, all right? One zero. Some people get mad at me by the way when I say it's ten. One plus one is one zero. So you carry the one, just like in decimal. One plus one plus one is eleven or one one. Carry the one. One plus zero plus zero is one. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus zero zero plus zero is zero. So, um, we have here, um, did I do this wrong? Uh, three and, oh, uh, three plus 11, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Fooled you. Three plus 11 is 14. There we go. So one, okay. So eight plus four plus two is 14. Just making sure you guys were awake and on your toes. Okay. So let's do another one. And then in four minutes, I'll give you your next homework assignment. So we'll do uh, three plus um, five. So five is four plus one, right? Four plus one is five. So, my little brother was crying so hard while I was trying to decode binary. <laughs> it's a simple spell, but quite unbreakable. Okay, so what is what is three plus five? You know, 
I'm going to take a crack at this one. What is 3 plus 5? Here, I'll do, I'll do the decimal. You guys do the binary. There we go. <clears throat> What's the binary? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, if you just like, you know, if you don't actually go through the process of adding, you know, it's just eight, right? It's three plus five. But if we, uh, <laughs> but if we actually do the work, right, it's going to be one plus one is 10. One plus one plus zero is 10. One plus one is 10. One plus zero plus zero is one. And these are zeros. Okay. So very good. Good job. All right. Do one more. What is 010101 plus 101010? I sound like Pac Man. 101010101010. It's 21 plus 42. So, Joanna, go through and add each pair of digits up. And if you ever get a 10, carry. Plus zero is one, zero plus one is one, one plus zero is one, zero plus one is one, one plus zero is one, zero plus one is one. And I'm guessing this is going to be 63. I'm not guessing actually, but yeah. Okay. So that is, that is sort of the essence of binary. Okay. Well, for this one, you can probably do it in your head, right? Because you can just look at each, you know. Right, just these are all one. And you go down. All right. So let's talk about your next homework assignment. Um, so I do want to get to um, one more programming assignment because we've only done a little bit of programming this class, and uh, this is computer science one. It's not just critical thinking. Computer science and critical thinking. So, um, well, not found was oh, this is last year's one. Okay. Um, there's an updated link. There we go. Just this one. Okay. So. Uh, for this assignment, you guys are going to learn Python, and uh, it is uh, the most pr common programming language nowadays. So Python is now the number one programming language in the world, and it's so popular because it is easy to learn. So even if you've never programmed before, you can learn Python real fast. If you guys are experienced programmers in this class, like uh, uh, Bywater, then uh, go, go above and beyond. Okay, on this assignment. So the uh, um, we're going to be doing this on Microsoft Learn, which um, I've partnered with Microsoft as well for doing data science stuff. They've given us like free Azure credits and things like that to support the program as well. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is just kind of go through the, uh, you know, it, it basically just kind of explains things to you. Um, just kind of click through it. Uh, when you finish, it gives you XP. So what you're going to turn in for this assignment is just a screenshot showing that you did um, all of the all of the stuff. It'll turn green when you when you complete all the different um, you do all the different parts of it. So knowledge check, you know this kind of stuff, all right? And it's going to go through. It's going to go through. Um, 
it's all coding tools, write basic Python and notebooks, control schemas. Yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna actually teach you Python if you don't know it before. Right? And um, uh, and then it's gonna run you through a simple data science thing, like a really simple data science thing. This is just reading some multiple choice, kind of like Zybooks, except look, it's actually code. So this is something called a um, Jupyter Notebook. And sign in to activate sandbox, sure. Cool, awesome. I'm from United States. I don't know why that matters, but next. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Stop asking me questions. Yeah. So, verifying permissions. Seriously. Okay. So, this is something called a Jupyter Notebook. And this is actually, it looks, you know, we're just here on a website. But you can actually run it. Um, so, if I hit Shift Enter, it's um, it's actually going to run the code. And let's see, clear self. Commands. Let's see. Um, shift enter. Uh, I wonder if I have to do this. But what it is, it's an interactive two factor authentication. At least I got my phone on me this time. What it is, it's an interactive programming website. Like it's a website where like each one of those fields that we saw uh, is a, um, we're good, sandbox activated. All right, cool. All right, so this is actually, this is actually code. So is it gonna run now? Good, good, good. All right, so you can see it's thinking, the answer is nine, you see that? So it's actually running a program. When you hit, when you hit that button there, 15 minus three, 12. 1700, 17,000 times two, 34,000. 100 divided by four, 25.0, okay? And so it, it actually runs you through Python. And Python is actually a really easy programming language to get started in. Um, literally, um, you just like print hello world and it'll print hello world um, like you, like most normal programming languages, you have to create a file and enter your program into it and stuff like that. Uh, Scratch is a visual programming language. Maybe Scratch is easier. I don't know, but Python's pretty damn easy. You know, 10 minus seven is three, you know, and you know, X is equal to 10. That's a variable. <laughs> Print the value of X, 10. Like it's pretty, pretty easy. So um, who's going to be the, by the bullet? Yeah, the screenshot, like if you, if you share the screenshot, it's blatantly obvious by the way. So, um, all right. So yeah. And so basically you just go through here. This is modulus, uh, the remainder operator, uh, exponentiation, uh, integer division instead of floating point division. And then you click next and it gives you the XP and then, yeah. So it just explains to you Python and you just kind of go through this and just kind of run the stuff. And at some point it's going to ask you to write, kind of write your own code and you can edit any of these things, right? It's like, you could uh, be like, okay, well, what if instead of three plus one, I did three plus two run it's five. Oh, look at that. You know? So uh, you're all doing it on Zoom together if you want. There's no, absolutely no reason to. This is like pretty, pretty much as easy as it gets, you know? So, um, uh, set a variable equal to five, add three to it. It's now eight, subtract two from it. It's now six, you run it. Uh, well, you need to print it. There. Print base salt rock count and print six. Okay. 
So, um, this this uh, learning unit was developed in conjunction with NASA. So NASA actually uh, worked with Microsoft to put this thing together to show you how they use Python to do space exploration and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. You guys, you guys have any questions about it? You you will need to make an account on Microsoft Learn um, for the uh, code to work. Um, yeah, I don't know. You get to feel like Mark Watney, astronaut stranded on Mars. Uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, uh, there, there's a. Um, um, Table of contents. At the end of the day, um, you're just going to have this thing filled out. It'll turn green when you finish it. If you don't want to do the assignment, I don't know, open in Photoshop and use the fill tool and turn it green. I don't know. <laughs> no, don't do that. It's This isn't hard, really. Um, <clears throat> so... At the end of the day, what I'm going to ask you to do is write a small uh, thing in Python um, and just uh, screenshot that something using what you learned here. That's it. And so Scratch Scratch is visual, right? With Scratch, you uh, drag these blocks around and stuff. Um, this is text-based coding, so it's like it's actually. Scratch nobody uses like um, for reals. Like if you're a real programmer, like you don't use Scratch, right? This is purely a teaching device. This is actually um, real code, right? And uh, as you go through it, you'll kind of learn what all this stuff means. Um, but this is actually a real programming language. And so if you, um, one of the reasons why I do the, do it in this class is because you you gotta find out if programming is something you want to do. This kind of thing with like butterflies and like animated cats, like no, nah, this isn't. Nobody's gonna pay you money like to like make scratch space invaders and stuff like that, right? Like maybe there is, maybe the there's some niche company that makes scratch games or something, but um, but for Python, Python is the number one programming language in the world right now, and after you do this assignment, you will know Python. Like, legitimately. It's not a hard language to learn. You will actually know Python. And you will see if uh, computer science is a thing you want to do. What do we do as computer science majors? We stare at things like this all day long, you know? But that's not why computer science is fun. Computer science is fun because um, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Like, you have to kind of like problem solving like computer science people are all people that like picking apart problems and like all right this seems really hard like how do i how do i how do i do this you know you just sit there and you stare at a wall for five minutes you know and like all right, how do i solve this problem it's really tricky you know and when you do computer science there's only five or six things like variables algebra um reading writing from the keyboard and you're going to learn all of them. Like, you know all of the tools that grad students have in computer science. But the question is, how do you put those tools together to solve solve problems? And if you get excited when you solve a problem, it's like, yes, you know, I got it. That's usually the attitude you want to have um, as a computer science major. Like, you have to enjoy that sensation of, like, yes, that was a tough problem and I solved it. That, that sort of satisfaction. Um Whereas some people, their, their personality type, like uh, my wife, she's just like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And that's, you know, you know, like she's, she has a doctorate, you know, but she doesn't, you know, she has, she has a very straightforward personality. Whereas I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing today. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to solve this problem. I'm going to think about it, you know, and every day as a computer scientist, it's a little bit different. You know, you do something different every day as a computer scientist, because if you're going to do the same thing. You're going to copy and paste your code from yesterday. You know what I mean? If you ever give me the same problem to solve, I will just take my code from last time and copy and paste it and use it again. You know what I mean? So you're always solving something new. You're always working 
you know, on something that nobody has quite done before. And some people like that and some people hate it. And so this, this assignment here will give you, well, nothing hard, I guess, but it, it'll give you at least a taste of like what it's like to be a computer science major if you're not one already. Um, can you self-teach programming languages? Sure. Yeah, lots of people do. Uh, but, you know, doing going through something like this where it just sort of runs you through a language is, is a great way to learn. And uh, if you guys are like, um, you know, thinking about what major you're going to be, this assignment in particular, make sure you do it because it'll let you know if computer science is, you know, the kind of thing that, that matches your personality type. Yeah. Uh, time to make money making a game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, One dollar games on Steam or whatever. Uh, if you know C++, Python should be pretty easy. Yes. I learned I learned Python on a ski trip. Um, I uh, um, was a member of the ski team in college and um, uh, went on a week-long ski trip to Mammoth and uh, brought with me a book on Python. And I, without even having a computer with me, I learned Python on a ski trip while there's plenty of partying and other activities going on. So it's not, it's not a hard language to learn. If you know C++, Python's a snap. Yep. So, um, I'm not flexing. It's, it's actually just an easy language to learn. Like you just go through and you're like, oh, okay, that's how it works. How do you open a file? Well, open, you know, you pass in the name of the file to open. So that's the file. And then it's going to, how do you read a line from the file? Well, read line, you know, how do you print that line to the screen? Print. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a, you know, no, nothing, nothing in it is, um, that complicated. LF means el else if maybe that's complicated. I don't know. But, uh, Python. Oh yeah. The one thing that, that gets C plus plus people is, uh, it's rather than using curly braces and things like that to indicate where a function begins and a function ends or a for loop begins and a for loop ends. Python uses indentation. So Python is very, very strict about using tabs to indicate I'm in a for loop. I'm, in, you know, and you see all these things are tabbed over, you know, like this white space actually matters in, in Python. It does not matter in C++. So, uh, make Minecraft in two hours. Nah. <laughs> you know, as simple as Minecraft is, it's actually, quite hard to make a game like that, you know? So your brain is more visual than doing computation. Uh, yeah, it depends. Also, it's, it's also important to note that like programming is like learning a foreign language and nobody's good at a foreign language when they start. That's why it's called a foreign language. It's not your own, you know? Um, so it's just one of those things where you keep practicing it and, um, you get better, you know? So don't expect to be super elite hacker, or genius girl when you start, you know? Um, yeah, uh, it's just, it's something that comes with time. But the good news is you're gonna learn an actual real programming language. It's a fun little project. Um, it's not, not anything hard, you know, you just kind of go through it. And, uh, and then you'll be like, oh, I kind of know Python. Are you employable? Eh, probably not. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're not. I don't know. Uh, does that guy have a chin strap on? What is that? Or is that, or is he smiling? It's kind of disturbing looking. Is he wearing a mask? I don't know. All right, so um, yeah, you guys have any questions about that? Let me know. I'm gonna change this. this smile. I don't know if that's a smile or what. It's just kind of bugging me. So we'll go back to this one. All right. How many if statements in an immersive game? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, I can tell you, my game. Hmm, like the Quake Engine. Uh, 
for the server. Uh, 1,600 if statements in the quick server. In my code, my game code, there's 14,000 if statements. So my code is actually about 10 times as complicated as the server itself. So the server is the actual software that, you know, the server that you connect to and all that stuff, handles all the networking, runs my game code. Uh, my game code is 10 times more complicated than the actual server itself. So, uh, yeah. Um, what is going on? What? I'm just, I'm just counting. Uh, I'm using the powers of computer science to count. You, you asked how many if statements go into a, go into a, a real program. I counted it. So, um, not by hand. I have programs for that. I'm a computer science major. Right? So, uh, if you're a computer science major, you don't do things by hand. You use the tools that exist already. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. And um, you'll have a week to do it. Uh, we'll do the final review next Wednesday. Um, then on Monday, there's one other topic I want to cover in this class before we're all done. And it's winter break, so that'll be that. Uh, thanks for coming out, you guys. Good seeing you again, and uh, have a great weekend. See you next week. Peace out.